Today we are celebrating Tolkien Reading Day. This year's theme is love and friendship, and when I heard that, I knew exactly who to cover. Turin, son of Hurin and Morwen, a man of the house of Haddol that lived in the first age of Middle-earth. But before we get into that, I'd like to thank Timbo Took for hosting this year's playlist for Tolkien Reading Day. Along with the other amazing Tolkien YouTubers, we are raising awareness and support for the charity Save the Children, that are currently doing all they can to help Ukrainian children. If you have anything to spare, please consider donating. The link is in the description and in the pinned comment below. Thank you. Turin's story is covered in several Tolkien books, but the most detailed version is found in The Children of Hurin. So I started reading the book again back in January to have a fresh memory of one of my favorite Tolkien stories. Turin's life is both fascinating and full of stories, so today we will focus on the theme of love and friendship. And in this video I thought we should cover the childhood of Turin and explore his friendships with Sador and Nellis. At first I had planned to cover the more familiar relations between Turin and the many characters of his story, but I think those deserve more time than I can offer right now. If you're unfamiliar with the story, you might not know about the curse that followed Turin wherever he went. His father Hurin had fought in the famous battle of Neonath Arnodiad, commonly known as the Battle of Unnumbered Tears. In this battle, the forces of elves, men and dwarves had faced the endless hordes of evil on the Morgoth's command. South of Angband had the battle been fought and many heroes had fallen in it, though we shall not cover their courage and deeds today. The last man standing in this battle was Turin's father, Hurin. With an orc axe, he held off the forces of evil for a long time, until he was captured by the orcs. Instead of killing him, they brought him back to Angband, where Morgoth himself chained him up with cruel plans of torture. Morgoth soon realized that the best way to inflict pain upon Hurin was to hurt his children. And thus Turin and his sisters were cursed by Morgoth. And this is something that marked Turin throughout his life, and would end many friendships and twist the love in his life. But before Turin was cursed, he was yet a child, living in peace in Dolomin. In Turin's childhood, he had not many friends, but one friend he had was Sador, that was a houseman in the service of Hurin. Sador was a cripple after an accident with an axe. He had been a woodman and had accidentally severed his right foot. The remaining part of his leg had shrunken from the lack of use. Before the accident, he took part in the famous battle of Dergabragolak, but he came too late to the battlefield, however, and was only able to bring back the fallen Hador, the grandfather of Hurin. He was then stationed at Ithil Syrian, and was there when Hurin took command. But he tired of war and returned to his woods, at which point he obtained his injury. He remarked to Turin that a man that flies from his fear may find that he has only taken a shortcut to meet it. Turin gave him the name Lapadel, meaning Hopperfoot, but he didn't give him the name out of mockery, but instead out of pity, and for that reason, Sadar didn't mind the name. Sadar was a man with a good heart. Hurin once said the following about Sadar, An honest hand and a true heart may hew amiss, and the harm may be harder to bear than the work of a foe. Despite Sadar's injury, it was rarely something he complained about, and he didn't raise his temper as others mocked him. Sadar worked in the outbuildings near the house, fixing things around it, which were usually of little importance. He was Turin's best friend during his youth, and the boy would often help by fetching materials and tools to spare him from walking. Sadow enjoyed Turin's company, and would often carve for him figures of men and beasts, although Turin enjoyed Sadow's stories the most. Also his wisdom was something he shared with Turin, that loved to listen and learn from him. Sadow shared many insights about the nature of men, elves and fate, here are some examples of some of the wise words he told Turin. False hopes are more dangerous than fears. Give with a free hand, but give only your own. So must men teach, and few men learn. But Turin did indeed learn, and it seems like he gained some wisdom himself, despite his very young age. On Turin's birthday, his father gave him an elfin knife of great worth. Turin pitied Sador and decided to give the gift to him. Sado accepted the gift, as it would be rude not to. 
but he knew he would be unable to repay Turin for such a gift. Turin's mother, Morwin, did not care for Saddle and called him self-maimed by his own wand of skill, and he is slow with his tasks, for he spends much time on trifles unbidden. But Turin noted that his act of generosity resulted in Saddle being treated more kindly. At this time, Saddle set out to carve a great throne for the Hall of Hurin. After Turin departed, Saddle remained in the house of Morwin, though he wished he may have joined the battle to die a valiant death. Many years later, upon Turin's return from Nagathron, Saddle and Turin met again, but did not recognize each other at first glance. Saddle had become an old man, yet he had courage, and after Turin had killed the Easterling that ruled his homeland, Saddle was wounded during the fight and ended his days in that hall. Saddle is a character I truly love, and I would say as a child, we often encounter friendly adults that can become very close to you, sometimes a friend, other times a kind teacher that shares their wisdom with you. In some cases, you take that wisdom with you and never forget it. As Turin fled from his homeland to grow up in Doriath, he had a hard time. King Thingol had been so kind to adopt him as his son, as was custom at the time. Among the elves, Turin didn't have many friends, and it's said that he had problems getting new friends in general. One friend he got early on was a young elf maiden called Nelles. She lived in the woods near Menegroth, the capital of Doriath, and didn't really like to go to Menegroth, but only to roam freely among the trees. At the bidding of the queen, Melian, she became the friend and tutor of Turin during his boyhood years in Doriath. It was from Nella's teaching that Turin gained the elf-like bearing and knowledge of Sindarin. This elf-like bearing would later earn him the name Adanathil, Elfman, among the elves of Nagathron when he lived among them. After Turin's accidental slaying of Seiros, it was Nella's account that earned him the forgiveness of the king, though he did not know, as he had already exiled himself from the hidden kingdom of Doriath. Nellas had been watching him from a tree, and thus witnessed how Seiros had tried to murder Turin. Yet the son of Hurin won, and hunted Seiros to the river, where the fatal accident happened. When Turin later was told that Nellas had watched him, he seemed to have forgotten her, and he seemed unaware that she might have been in love with him. We never really get an answer if this forgetfulness is part of his curse, but I find it likely that it was. Not only did Turin neglect his friendships, he also seemed unaware of other people's love for him. A truly tragic fate that would follow him and in the end lead to his death at his own hand. If you haven't read The Children of Hurin yet, I highly recommend it. It's a great way to get into the events of the First Age, and I have very fond memories of the book from my own childhood, which is why it only felt natural to cover the boyhood of Turin. If you liked the video, make sure to leave a like and subscribe. I also recommend you to check out one of these playlists to learn new fascinating things about Middle-earth.